Have you ever promised yourself something special, got it, and then unforeseen problems made you lose the enjoyment that you expected? That's what happened to me. I lived in the desert for 19 years, promising myself that I'd move to a scenically beautiful, cooler place near the ocean. By picking Bellingham, Washington, I got the beautiful area of the San Juan Islands between Puget Sound and the Straits near Vancouver, Canada. Besides ocean, there are the scenic North Cascade Mountains with the most photographed peak in the U.S. right nearby. Even more are the agricultural areas in the county where tulips, potatoes, and strawberries are grown for our national markets. Hundreds of snow geese migrate here in the winter. Offshore, the orca whales live year-round, and other whales traverse from Hawaii to Alaska seasonally. Eagles, great blue herons, deer, and seals are commonplace. People go crabbing, they catch salmon, and they dig clams in our bay. So what is not to like? The first year I lived here, November came with its rainy, cloudy skies. The excitement of Thanksgiving and Christmas meant joy. The day after Christmas, I didn't know what happened to me. The bottom fell out of my life. I work in diagnostic imaging, no windows. During winter, I would go into the hospital as the sky gets light through cloud cover, but there isn't any sunshine. At noon, I would look for the sun and find rain. At the end of the workday, the sun was going down. Each day I thought, maybe I'll see sunshine today as I struggle to get through my patient schedule. Jittery and loaded with caffeine, I followed the different protocols for different patients. I frowned at my coworkers, and I tried to be at least neutral to my patients, finding it impossible to be upbeat, positive, or happy with them. My favorite days happen when somebody brought treats, or if I had a bad day, my stash of chocolate candy became indispensable. I'd go home tired, eating carbs for comfort, telling myself that I'd be better after a good night's sleep. Then I couldn't get to sleep, and I couldn't wake up. Groggy and tired to start the day, I was irritable and unable to pull out of my feelings of sadness, lack of concentration, and weight gain. On the weekend, I'd have to sleep 12 hours straight to catch up, but that threw my sleep schedule off. My at-home relationship suffered because of my lack of energy and inability to get along, much less have fun. I kept thinking, I'll be getting sunshine soon, it was the end of February. What if we have a rainy spring? Yikes! When I went to a morning church program, I was told, Karen, you look like death warmed over. My body clock had gone haywire. My daily internal cycles called circadian rhythms were not just out of sync, they were lost. Now this made my body produce the wrong hormones and chemicals and neurotransmitters at the wrong time of the day. No wonder I was suffering. What could I do to take back my life? I had heard about light therapy. It was the end of February, and I had given up on seeing the sun until summer. So I bought a light therapy box, and I started using it for 30 minutes each day within the first hour of awakening. The light is simulated sunshine, and with it placed on an angle, not straight ahead, the light goes peripherally into the eyes. This activates the brain to produce the right hormones, chemicals, and neurotransmitters at the right time of day. I got the effect I wanted to overcome sadness, sleeplessness, lack of energy, and irritability. Wow! <laughs> it has been three years now, and my supervisor sent me an email calling me the shining star of our department. Not only am I able to smile through my day, I'm able to sleep through my night. No more mood swings, lack of concentration, or memory impairment. I stuck to my eating plan, and the weight also came off. My at-home relationship is more loving and fun-filled. Instead of being death warmed over, I'm the life of the party, even at early church. How does this work for the night shift? By taking a 30-minute burst of light before work, and then 15 minutes of light every three hours during work, the body's internal clock adjusts. This increases alertness and helps me perform better. No more confusion and living on caffeine. On leaving work, it's important to wear sunglasses and avoid bright light on the way home. I get to sleep as soon as possible. Now the promise I made to myself of living in a scenically beautiful place near the ocean is filled with enjoyment every single day and night. Following these guidelines takes implementation. Making changes in our habits 
takes determination. Making these changes also gives rewards of elevated mood. I'm here to coach you through the transition so that you can bring enjoyment back to your work and life. We all have a circadian rhythm, and whether it's the normal circadian rhythm or the imbalanced circadian rhythm depends on when we sleep. Normally, when it's light outside, we're awake. And then when it's dark, we're asleep. That's the normal circadian rhythm. When people work night shift like nurses, their circadian rhythm is different because they're trying to sleep when it's light. So what happens is their circadian rhythm gets imbalanced. And our body needs sunlight to tell our brain to make certain hormones that create the right metabolism for our bodies. So circadian rhythm becomes extremely important. And another word for circadian rhythms is our wake and our sleep cycles. That becomes very important because imbalances of circadian rhythm lead to sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation leads to lots of problems. So some of the symptoms of sleep deprivation are fatigue, blurry vision, irritability, and slower reaction times. So you can see that overcoming sleep deprivation becomes extremely important. Let me tell you the story of what happened to me when I was sleep deprived. I did a misadministration. And what that means is I gave my patient the wrong dose. And the first time I did it, I have to say I did it twice. The first time I did it, my, my room was dark. I had a choice of two doses that I could give them, and I was so blurry-eyed, I was so foggy in my brain, and so fuzzy thinking, I picked the wrong one. And the room was dark, I couldn't see what I was doing, and I went ahead, I didn't check it. So we changed the protocol, the department did a little more, and, and that was fine, it wasn't a big deal. Three months later, here I am, still sleep deprived, I did it again, and this time, oh, it was so painful to me. It fortunately did not hurt the patient, but the fact that we had to, to have a big meeting at the hospital, we had to review our whole protocols about this particular incident, upset me so badly. As I was driving home, I said, no, I just, can't, I just can't work anymore. How can I do this to people? How can I do this to myself? It was just almost the end of my job. It was extremely excruciating to me. So if you're sleep deprived, then it's only a matter of time before something happens that could become an incident. Let me explain a little more about this with a chart. And that's it. Let me bring it into place here. So what I've done is I have two sides of my chart. The top here are circadian rhythm. On this side, I've got the normal. On this side, I've got the opposite. So what that means is that in the opposite rhythm, you're sleep deprived. When you're awake, it's dark. On this side, you're awake and it's light. But here, on the opposite rhythm, our, our wake and sleep cycles are upside down. So let's see what happens after that. Memory. How about memory? When we have normal rhythm, our memory is sharp. When we have our opposite rhythm, our memory is fuzzy. How about our focus and our alertness? When we have our normal circadian rhythm, our focus is clear. And when we have the opposite circadian rhythm, what happens? We get foggy. It's hard to concentrate. So what happens to our productivity? Well, here, yes, the arrow points up. On the side, this side, it points down. And what that means is more accidents on this side when we are sleep deprived. So there is a solution to this problem of sleep deprivation. And that's in the form of light therapy. And what light therapy has done for me has just saved me and saved, saved my whole outlook on my job and made me a person that is happier, that is more upbeat, 
and more positive. So I really suggest that you consider light therapy. So what light therapy does, it enters your eye peripherally and it simulates sunshine. And then your brain makes chemicals, neurotransmitters, and hormones. And these are the things that keep your body in balance and keep you back over here on the normal circadian rhythm, even though you're working when it's dark. And that's the value of light therapy, because then your body feels normal again. And this is absolutely wonderful, because here you're in opposition and your sleep and wake cycles, so your body works for you. So let me show you what my light box looks like. And this is the one that I have used, but there are many different kinds. So it's just a small thing. It's used peripherally. And the benefits are, as I'm just talking to you, it's peripherally in my eye. So it's going, the light's going to my brain and telling my brain to make the right hormones, chemicals, and neurotransmitters to keep my body in balance and keep my circadian rhythm in balance. So what I do is I sit with this First thing, or when I first get up, first wake up after my daytime sleep, I get up and I have this in my eyes for 30 minutes. Then I come to work. Every three hours, I take a 15 minute break with my light therapy. That keeps me alert through the night. So the light therapy box gives the same light as sunshine. This is so important to me, and it has saved me from making any more mistakes. In fact, during my last job evaluation, you know how we get those once a year, at the conclusion of it, my boss sent me an email that said, Karen, you are the shining star of our department. To learn more about light therapy and what it can do to save your job, click the link below and you'll get lots more information.